Rebuilding a model steam plant. This is part 14. Finding suitable boiler fittings. A water gauge and a check valve plus a pressure gauge with a siphon. Removing the paint from the water gauge and replacing some varnish on the baseboard. I've just taken the boiler out of the acid bath and I'm starting to clean it up. Before it went in the acid bath it looked like this. As you can see there's plenty of lime scale in the bushes. But now all of the lime scale has disappeared. While I was looking through my box of water gauges I found this. It's a Stuart water gauge but it's different parts of a Stuart water gauge. And the blowdown valve is a very small globe valve. I decided against using these water gauge parts, instead I'm going to use one of these. Made by Chris English of CME Engineering, they are really excellent. And in fact I do use them most of the time. Normally when I buy these water gauges, mainly for locomotives, they have a quarter by 40 thread. But this one is threaded a quarter by 32 threads per inch, perfect for this boiler. I also found a check valve that was threaded quarter by 32, and here it is fitted to the boiler. The initial fitting of parts to this boiler took place before I put it in the acid bath. And it looks quite different now, especially as I've started polishing up the barrel. The next thing I need is a siphon and a pressure gauge. And here they are. The pressure gauge and the siphon are both brand new, although the siphon is a bit tarnished with age. For its size, this is quite a substantial siphon, but I do need to clean it up. It fastens to the boiler with a banjo union, as shown here. But I'm not going to fit it until the boiler's thoroughly clean. And also, I need to clean up the siphon itself, because it's badly tarnished. These are very difficult to clean, because you can't put a lot of pressure on them, otherwise they bend and distort. And here, I'm starting off the job using some Brasso wadding. And in no time at all, parts of the siphon started to shine, but this is not good enough. It's top tip time. Small parts like this are very difficult to clean, and this is the way I normally do it. Here I've clamped a piece of cotton cloth in the vice jaws. It's actually a piece of curtain lining. I got a lot of this many years ago when I used to do some computer work at a company that made curtains. Normally I would apply some tea cut cutting compound to the cloth, but in this case I just rubbed it with a piece of brasso wadding. The abrasive from the wadding is transferred to the cloth. All I need to do now is rub the siphon up and down this piece of cloth. And now it looks like this, and I've been able to get inside the loop. This is a quick and simple way of polishing parts like pressure gauge siphons and even chime whistles. This is where the siphon and pressure gauge goes, but before I fit it, I'm going to clean up the boiler. And here is the boiler from the previous episode been lowered into the acid bath. This, by the way, is not a very strong acid. It's actually Kill Rock K Kettle Descaler. While the boiler's been cleaned and descaled, I can remove the paint from the water gauge fittings. In my second workshop, which is attached to the house, I'm putting the fittings into a food container, which is part full of cellulose thinners. I'll leave the parts like this until the next day. When I find that almost all of the paint has fallen off, I remove the rest very carefully using a toothbrush. It's not a good idea to touch this stuff with your fingers, and you certainly don't want to get it in your eyes. Suitable PPE, personal protective equipment, is recommended. You will notice that the bottom water gauge fitting has an aluminium washer fitted. This was removed, and now it looks like this. And when I fit the water gauge to the boiler, I will use copper shim washers to align it. In this clip, you can see that the paint is literally falling off the parts, and I'm not applying much pressure with the toothbrush to remove all of it. Once I take these parts out of the cellulose thinners, and the solvent has evaporated, I will take them up to the main workshop and polish them. For now, they can stay where they are in the cellulose thinners, to remove any final traces of paint. This is a tin of Ron Seal Hard Glaze Polyurethane Varnish. This is not the new water-based stuff, it's the old smelly oil-based varnish. I need to use some of this to repair the baseboard where I had to rub down part of it. Once upon a time, when this was a complete steam plant, there was a bit of a mess in this area. 
which is a bit odd because everything else is bolted down apart from here where a very small condenser was stuck to the baseboard with epoxy resin. I scraped it off very carefully but it still marked the baseboard. In case you're wondering what I'm currently doing, I'm replacing these fittings. They look like drains but they're not, they're just little caps. A reservoir in the engine bases drain into these. And when they get full, you just remove them, tip out the oil and put them back in place. With the varnish on the baseboard, it's now been sealed. It's slightly discoloured in that area, but it doesn't matter, because I intend to fit a long, horizontal condenser. More about this in a future episode. That's it for this one. I'll leave you with the shot of the varnish drying. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.